Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to this short introductory micro video. Uh, we're going to be looking at two important types of capital as an economic resource. So the economic problem essentially involves decisions about how to make the best use of limited, scarce resources when not all wants and needs can be fully satisfied. Now, these resources, we sometimes call them factor inputs, include land, labor, enterprise or entrepreneurship, and capital. And we'll spend a few minutes focusing on the concept of and applications of capital in this short video. So what is capital to an economist? Well, perhaps it's best to start by explaining what it isn't. Uh, capital investment to an economist is not about saving money in a bank or buying stocks and shares, which the media likes to refer to as investment. Instead, capital to an economist means something different, as hopefully this video will make clear. So when we talk about capital, we talk about spending on capital goods. So capital goods are man-made goods used to produce or supply other products. Could be drones, new vehicles, building a bigger factory, installing more hardware, and also the software to run computer systems. Many students struggle with the concept of capital in economics, especially in relation to the term investment. So investment to an economist is the purchase of capital goods or the addition to an economy's capital stock. And, and these are all examples coming up of physical capital used in the economy from big transport infrastructure, including the London Underground, HS2, uh, Crossrail. Investment in bulky units of capital in large factories allowing mass production. Uh, capital invested in building platforms upon which digital services such as Instagram or WhatsApp can operate. And we'd also include things like cloud computing, physical capacity in the cloud computing uh, networks. Now, building networks of servers, usually accessed over the internet, and of course, to store and manage and process data. So what we would do is we would call these examples of physical capital. And when firms spend money on capital, this is known to an economist as investment. Here's an example of capital in action in farming. Drones can make farming more efficient and also I think they can make farming more fun. For example, they can be used to remotely identify livestock. Drones in farming can be used to provide autonomous spraying solutions for particularly for difficult to access field areas of crops. So increasingly we're seeing drone technology being used in farming, particularly in emerging developing countries. In 2020, uh, spending on drones, for example, is projected to rise by four uh, billion US dollars compared to last year to reach 16.3 billion dollars. And spending on robotics is already well above 110 billion dollars a year. Indeed, we're seeing huge amounts of money invested in robots as a form of physical capital, particularly in the logistics industry, including businesses such as Amazon and Ocado. Amazon needs this robotic system to fast forward to supercharge the, the order fulfillment process to make it more efficient, in particular as they try to move to same day delivery for which people are prepared to pay a premium price. Uh, take a look at this chart. Globally, the operational stock of industrial robots, which have many purposes, but more generally industrial robots, is expe expected to rise from 1.6 million in 2015 <clears throat> to nearly double that in 2020, just over three, around 3.2 million industrial robots in operation worldwide by 2020. And of course, this figure will grow even more quickly in the years to come. Your careers advisors at school and college will probably have already reminded you several times that robots are set to have a big, big impact on the workforce around the world. Uh, typically, if you look at this chart, I mean, these are the countries probably with most companies expecting a fall in the number of employees as robotics replace labour. And typically, I'm generalising here, but they tend to be involving jobs, involving routine manual activity. 
they're most at risk from automation from robotics. So look out for those big changes in the labor market. Of course, robotics create jobs as well as replace them. So we focus so far on physical capital. Let's have another look at capital. Uh, here's a question. What examples of capital are used in the NHS? You might want to pause the video here and think of three or four examples of physical capital that might be used in the National Health Service. The coronavirus pandemic, of course, has put a huge strain on the capital inputs available in healthcare systems across the world. Well, what examples can you come up with here? Are four examples that I've chosen. <clears throat> One might be, for example, the ventilators. Here we see an artificial lung ventilator monitoring an intensive care unit. So we've seen a strong demand increase and need to supply more ventilators uh, in the health services, not just in the UK, across the world. Investment in physical capital might be in new magnetic resonance imaging scanners, MRI scanners used in hospitals. Perhaps even hospitals investing in solar panels shown here in front of a hospital to provide a source of renewable energy. And modern hospitals typically heavily laden with surgical equipment and operating theatres. You can see from this that hospitals are often very capital intensive, physically capital intensive, particularly when they're providing acute and emergency care. <clears throat> so we focus so far on the concept of physical capital and what it means to an economist. There is also something called human capital. I just wanted to spend a minute or two on human capital. Well, human capital is defined by the World Bank as the knowledge, the skills, the health, the experience, the aptitudes that people accumulate over their lives, enabling them to realise their potential as productive members of their societies, their communities. And human capital is regarded, this is really a really important point to finish with, human capital is regarded as complementary to investment in physical capital. So you can build new buildings, you can install new plants and equipment, you can have the latest technology to hand, uh, but you also need human capital to make really good use of it. During this period, for example, in the NHS, uh, in recent times, the number of specialist surgeons employed in the health sector in the UK has been rising. So we've seen an increase in physical investment in the NHS. We've also seen a rise in the amount of human capital. You can see here, for example, in 2000, the number of specialist surgeons amounted to about 30,000. By in 2019, the number of specialist surgeons was nearly 60,000 the highest number over that 20 year period. So this combination of human capital and physical capital that's really quite important to understand as an economist. So in this video, we have looked briefly at physical capital, sometimes known as fixed capital, and human capital. And both are very important for businesses to be successful and for countries that want to grow and become more competitive in the world economy. <clears throat> in, in short, in summary, we invest in capital to help produce or supply more goods and services in the future.